Our first lesson for this morning comes from Mark chapter 12, verses 28 through 34. So listen for what the Holy Spirit is telling God's people. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one and beside him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any question. Second lesson this morning comes from the book of Ruth, chapter one, verses one through 18. So listen once more for the word of God. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah went to live in the country of Moab, he and his wife and two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi. The names of his two sons were Malon and Chilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there, but Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. When they had lived there about 10 years, both Malon and Chilion also died, so that the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. Then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab. For she had heard in, that in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered her, his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, go back, each of you, to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them and they wept aloud. They said to her, no, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, it has been far more bitter for me than for you, because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept aloud again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but... Ruth clung to her. So she said, look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, do not press me to leave you, to turn back from following you. Where you go, 
I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. Your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord do thus to me, and more as well, if even death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. Well, I'm sure you heard it in the story, but this is a story about loyalty and devotion. But it's not just a story about any loyalty and devotion. This is a story about fierce loyalty and unwavering devotion. This is the story of two women who, against all odds, are clinging to one another, clinging to one another in hopes of making their way through a very dangerous world. And they want to go together. And it all starts in this opening chapter from the book of Ruk. And like, like all good stories, this one comes with a bit of a twist. It begins, as many stories do, with a conflict. There's a problem. A famine had struck the land of Judah. And in order to survive, this one family, unnamed at the beginning, a father, a mother, and their two sons, they have to pack up their bags and move rather quickly to a more fertile place. And you know how it is. Famines, famines are devastating. Even now, they are super, super dangerous. But in the ancient world, the ancient world of biblical Judah, famines left families on the brink. And they were especially dangerous for people who needed to make their living off of the land, growing the very food that they consumed as most people did back in those old-timey times. Conditions of, of drought and famine forced many people to just leave, to leave their friends, to leave their families, their extended families, to leave their homes, just so that they had the glimmer of hope of the possibility of survival. In desperation, these people would leave their homelands in search of places that were more abundant, that seemed to be more fertile, that had food in abundance, where farming was easier, although it was only temporarily easier for most of these people. And so it was for Elimelech, Naomi, Malon, and Hilion. The outset of the story, there, there are no names. They're just a man and his, his wife and their two sons. The family was nameless because it could have been anybody. It could have been any family from any place in the ancient world because the world itself is a dangerous and topsy-turvy sort of place where things don't always go smoothly. You know this, don't you? I sure do. But now at this point in the story... We find out a little bit about who they are. We know their names at this point. We find out little bits about these people. They're, they are Ephrathites from Bethlehem in the land of Judah. And they journey away from Judah, making their way to the region, country of Moab. A foreign land with foreign people. Somewhat nearby, yet an eternity away. And once this happens, once they make it there, the story picks up pace and has an intensity just like we've seen in the gospel according to Mark. Everything unfolds quickly and intensely. Elimelech dies not too long after. Malon and Hilion marry Moabite wives and then after 10 years, they too die. Nothing has gone right. Nothing has gone the way that it's supposed to in this story. A famine, a death. Ten years later, two more deaths. Now we're left with these three women, these three widows, all alone together in this dark and dangerous world. Three women left to deal with the, the trauma of life and the pain of their losses. 
Three women who are left to, to navigate the dangers of this patriarchal world. Three women who are left, left to make their way into the unknown future, not knowing what, what lies up around the bend. And the elder, Naomi, she just pleads with her two widowed daughters-in-law, pleads with them, begs them to leave her, to return home, to make new lives for themselves from the house of their parents. And at first, at first they, they resist. Those two foreigners follow her faithfully. But that faithful togetherness is fairly short-lived as Orpa opts to go home. And we're not told why. We're not told why she decides to leave, but it's really not all that difficult to see why. The outlook is just not good for these three women. Not only is the journey from Moab to Judah really long and, and arduous, but even if they make it all the way back to their homeland in Judah, all the way back to Bethlehem, there is no telling what they will find there. It is all a risk. The journey into this unknown future is simply too dangerous for Orpah to take that risk. So she cuts ties, cuts ties with Naomi, and she returns home to her family in Moab. But Ruth, Ruth clung to her. Ruth clung to Naomi. Ruth clung to her. These are words that change the story. These are words that change the book of Ruth. They're words that change history. Ruth clung to her. Upon these words, the tale turns. In the face of a perilous journey and an uncertain future, it is the fierce loyalty and the unwavering devotion of Ruth that takes center stage, that becomes the focal point of the book of Ruth. And herein lies the twist, the twist of the story. This fierce loyalty, this unwavering devotion, it comes from the most unlikely of places. It comes from Ruth, a Moabite woman, a widow, the ultimate outsider, the most unlikely of people. When Naomi asks, will you go with me? Why will you go with me? Ruth responds by saying, where you go, I will go. No questions asked. When Naomi asks, why will you go with me? Ruth responds, where you lodge, I will lodge. No questions asked. When Naomi asks, why will you go with me? Ruth responds, your people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. Where you die, I will die. There I will be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me and more as well, if even death parts me from you. No questions asked. Fierce loyalty. That's what this is unwavering devotion. That's what this is. This, this here is the type of togetherness that gets everyone through the unexplainable of life. And it seems to me that this is the type of togetherness that we need more and more and more of in our world today. And you know, we see glimpses of it, don't we? We see glimpses of this type of intense togetherness after natural disasters. That's what's happening here and now in Western North Carolina, in Florida, in Georgia, in South Carolina. But we need more of this fierce loyalty, more of this unwavering devotion day in and day out. We need much, much more togetherness each and every day here in our community and beyond. And I think that's in part, it's in part what this Sunday is all about, this All Saints Sunday. I mean, All Saints Day, All Saints Sunday, it is a day of remembrance. 
when we remember those disciples who have come before us and have paved our way. It's, it's a day of thanksgiving. We, we celebrate the contra- contributions of those who have come before us, but, but it's also a day of sorrow for many. A day when we remember that we have lost loved ones and where we feel like we've been seemingly left behind in this cruel and, and dangerous world. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. In, in this church, in this congregation, no one will be left alone. Here in this church, in this congregation, nobody will be left alone. Because here, we the people at North Wilkesboro Presbyterian Church, we are a fiercely loyal people. We are an unwaveringly devoted people. When one of us is sick, whether in home or in hospital, we visit one another and we pray for one another and we comfort one another. When one of us has lost a a loved one, we sit with one another and cook for one another and share stories with one another. And when one of us is not able to make it to the one place he or she would rather be to worship, we, we bring worship to them. We extend the hand of fellowship to them. We visit with them. We share the bread and the cup together with them because no one, No one should make their way into an unknown future alone. We go there together. So when someone asks us, why will you go with me? We here at North Wilkesboro say, we will go with you because the journey of faith is a journey taken together. We will go with you because that's just what we do here. We will go with you because it's just who we are as a family of faith. We will go with you because we go together. Thanks be to God. Amen. And friends, now we go. We go out into the world that God so dearly and deeply loves. But we go as people who are fiercely loyal to one another and to God. We go as people who are unwaveringly devoted to one another and to God. We go as people to love and serve God and God's people together as a family of faith. So let us go and do that with one another. And let us go now with this blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus the Christ, may the love of God our Creator, and may the partnership of the Holy Spirit the Lord and giver of life. May that God go with you and with me and with us together this day and forevermore. Alleluia. Amen.